What's going on, everybody? In this video, we are gonna be talking about what's going on in the markets, some major moves made by some of the biggest organizations into the NFT space, even during a bear, and how people are killing each other's NFTs. And by the way, if you are interested in the Parallax NFT, our reveal is coming up real soon, most likely next week. So for those of you who are holders, you know, it's been a long time coming, and I'm pretty sure that you are going to love the art. And if you are considering becoming a holder, this might be an opportunity, especially because it's gonna be right before reveal. So maybe you wanna, keep an eye on the price before a reveal, after a reveal, whenever you know you feel comfortable doing it. And of course, there's gonna be so many other benefits and utility provided in our Discord where we're focusing as a media company and education. So make sure to check us out on OpenSea if you are interested. If you want the latest alpha or just some thoughts on the things I'm thinking about in the NFT space or personal thoughts even, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Patrick Dang. All right, first thing we gotta do is cover what's going on in the market. So for the most part, not much change from yesterday. Everything's pretty much just trading sideways for the most part over the last 20 four hours so nothing new going on over there now when we are going into let's say the top NFT volume pretty much the same thing going on nothing too interesting going on when it comes to the news everything's just kind of quiet a little bit during a bear market now we do actually have some news on some of the blue chip projects that are making some major moves in this space and that is Kevin Rose's proof acquires divergence engineering team so divergence from my understanding is basically like a development team that helps other projects you know do their back-end development and essentially they acquired this company I think Kevin Rose is a investor Investor in this company before they got acquired. So I think it was just a natural progression of like, hey, you know, we really like working with you guys. Why not just join the proof team instead of doing everything on your own, right? And I would say during this time, during a bear market, when, you know, money's not flowing as it was before, uh, you're going to see a lot of consolidation in the market where, you know, smaller teams that maybe need funding or they need uh, more ways to hire people or it's very difficult to make it as an indie shop. They're just going to get acquired by another company. They're going to be offered something they probably can't refuse. And then they're just going to join the larger company, right? And we've seen that with every industry whether it's tech or any emerging industry where in the beginning when there's a gold rush, you know, everybody and their grandma starts an NFT project. And then what's going to happen is that, you know, when there's so much saturation in the market, you know, businesses can't survive and they have to consolidate. Um, and then the ones that are the largest will basically swallow up the market and then they're going to pick the best. And then all those teams like, come together, right? I'm not saying that uh, Divergent is not a good or bad team because I don't know too much about, you know, everything they did, but looking at the track record of helping other projects like like Brotchain and Kiss Precise, I'm not familiar with those, but Gmoney Admit One, yeah, I'm familiar with that one. So, you know, they do have a history and it's going to be interesting to see what they build. And it seems like for Proof and, and Moonbirds, based on this article, they are probably going to be building tools uh, for their audience. So maybe that's gonna be a Discord alternative, a way to display your NFTs, for example, um, in a more like natural way. Like for example, you know, when we wanna show someone our NFT collection, a lot of times we're just showing them our OpenSea link. And that's a very kind of weird, right? Cause it's not really like a gallery experience. It's just like, oh, here you go. So I'm guessing that they're gonna build some tools specifically and native for Web3 and people who are interested in that culture. So more engineering team, the better. And of course, Proof has $20 million um, from the sales of Moonbirds and they also have a lot of VC funding as well. You know, they're pretty in a healthy position when it comes to like having enough cash to acquire the best teams during a bear market and probably during the bull, if they continue this run and they continue to build confidence, um, then they're probably gonna be pretty set. All right, so the, our next piece of news is Disney is making some major moves into the NFT and Web3 space. So they came out with this thing, Disney Accelerator, and they officially announced it on July 13th, uh, which is just a couple of days ago. But essentially it's like this accelerator program where they're going to incubate, you know, growth startups essentially and a startup can literally have hundreds of employees, right? So it doesn't mean it's a small company. So some of the companies that they have, I'm not too familiar with these, but we'll go through them. But Polygon obviously is one of the most popular layer twos. So pretty interesting that they would have that in their investment portfolio. This guy over here, Puff NFT, he actually wrote a little nice thread. And why this is actually important just uh, before we get into it is because even during a bear market, some people are leaving the space because there's like, oh, NFTs is dead, Web3 is dead. But we've seen over time that a lot of people who have a lot of money, like these large organizations are continuing to spend hundreds of millions of dollars into this space, if not billions for some people. And so, you know, regardless of where the market is, no matter what the price of Ethereum is, there are people who are willing to spend hundreds of millions of dollars into this space and they will continue building because they can obviously see that this potentially can be a future. So if you're ever thinking about, you know, leaving the NFT space and things like that, I, I totally understand what you mean, where it's not as easy as it was to make money. But if you're able to build during the bear and, and look at things from a long-term horizon, then actually there's a really a bright future.
future because when you look around, you see all these companies and individuals and entrepreneurs continuing to make their vision come to life. And that's why we're still doing the Paralyzed YouTube channel, obviously. But this is actually one of the best times to like meet a network of people that you wouldn't be able to meet uh, during a bull market, but during a bear, they're like, ah, this guy's still here. So let's go ahead and talk to him, right? So let's go ahead and get into it. So Disney Accelerator, business development program. The goal is to help innovate growth companies, focusing on co-building future uh, VR, AR, Web3, each team, da, 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 da. Okay, so when Disney invests in your company, it's not just them investing money, but them also investing resources into you, um, helping you with connections and helping you reach a wider audience, right? So you cannot downplay the impact uh, being associated with Disney has. So some of the companies, Flick Play app, a social web three can create their own augmented reality videos using NFTs. Okay, interesting. In World provides VR, AR games, virtual worlds. Okay, Obsessed VR creates in-store experience for brands. All right, you know, and, and so far, like nobody really uses these things as far as I know, but could they potentially use that in the future? Possibly, right? I can see a world where people don't want to go to the store and they can put on their VR headset and just like shop around in the store virtually. Um, the experience is not great yet. Uh, I have Oculus uh, myself and it's pretty cool, but it's not like, you know, after I bought an Oculus, I probably used it like the first month and I never used it again. So the experience is not good enough for me to want to come back yet. Polygon obviously doing layer two stuff on top of Ethereum. And so there's a lot of AR, VR kind of stuff, right? Again, overall, like the products people aren't really using quite yet, but they're building it and potentially will people use it? Possibly, right? Definitely possible. And you know, the truth is we don't know exactly how VR and AR will actually play out, you know, like three, five, 10 years from now. And I feel like a lot of these things are experimenting to see what might potentially work. Like, can you use VR for, you know, online shopping? Is that gonna be the wave? Or is it that we're gonna use like augmented reality on a Disney ride? So you wear your augmented glasses and you go through a ride and you see all these crazy things. We don't know exactly what it will look like, but people are gonna try most things are gonna fail, but the things that do make it are gonna probably make it pretty big. That's why I would see like Disney investing a certain amount of millions into this type of thing, because if one thing hits, then it pays for everything. Now, in other random news, we're gonna talk about the sandbox real quick. Now, some people might be like, oh, the sandbox is empty. Yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. Like nobody really plays the sandbox. I think they get like less than a thousand users per week or per month. I forgot the exact stat. Tony Hawk is partnering with the sandbox, which is interesting. And uh, they're doing this little skateboarding game, right? Now it's interesting because how good would the skateboarding game be? I don't know, right? I mean, they're showing some pretty cool teasers but again, these are teasers, but we're not really seeing like how fun the game will be. Just to give you a reminder, you know, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 recently was re-released. Obviously, Tony Hawk is a brand in skateboarding. Literally, I used to play like Tony Hawk, like a lot of them as a, as a kid growing up, and they're even remaking the old ones and selling it again. So there definitely is an audience of people who like these skateboard games. Now, will they actually translate into a sandbox game where this whole NFT thing and buy assets? It's hard to say, but they do have the awareness. And if Tony Hawk like tweets about this, his audience will know about it. But I think we've seen that even if you get like Snoop Dogg or whoever to tweet about you and talk about you and create assets in the game, at the moment, it's really just NFT people speculating on assets, buying land next to this person person's land, hopefully it will go up. But um, right now it's not really leading into mainstream adoption. And I think we're kind of far from that, to be honest. So when I see this, it's cool that they're trying, but I also know that I'm probably not gonna log into the sandbox to play this Tony Hawk thing, right? I think moving forward, games have to really understand like how are they actually going to bring the uh, mainstream gamers into the space. And I don't think speculative assets are the way, but we'll see how it plays out. Now in other news, uh, BNB chain launches this thing called Dat Bay platform with red alarm. So you might be wondering, what is that? So basically, if you go on the dappbay.bnbchain.org, it's basically just showing you an easy way to look at, you know, what are the most popular things on the BNB chain. From my experience, like I'm not somebody that buys like BNB uh, NFTs, but there are some decent projects on it. A lot of like weird projects that aren't necessarily that interesting to me. There is a market for this and people do buy it. I'm not sure if it's going to be DGEN or people are long-term investors, but people do buy it. There is a lot of volume on this. What they do have is this thing called Red Alarm, right? So how it works is like, it's just telling you like, what are the things that are significant risk and potential potentially scams. And I feel like this is actually pretty good for the space. Uh, it's only available on the BNB chain. Uh, you can also go into this risk scanner, type in the address for a Binance Smart Chain contract, and they'll tell you if it's probably a scam or not based on their algorithm. The space really needs this for Ethereum, honestly. You know, like people get scammed even to today, even experienced people, sometimes it gets socially engineered, they click on the wrong link and bam, you know, they lose their NFTs. This is a really good step in the right direction for the space overall, because when people see this, you know, there's going to be some entrepreneur out there that says, hey, why don't this exist on Solana? Or why does this 
exists exist on Ethereum and maybe they'll build it, right? And so whenever you do a degen mint or something like that, and you're not sure if it's real or not, maybe just put the smart contract chain, the address in here, and then you'll find out if it's real or fake, right? And I'm sure the technology will get better. And this is definitely what the space needs. And also if there was like this built into MetaMask where it will be like, hey, before you mint, there's a really high risk that you're gonna lose all your NFTs. Do you still wanna mint it? Like there needs to be technology like that that tells you. Obviously, you know, at the end of the day, if you press the button, it's your fault. But like, you know, if there's more technology that can help you, that would be a lot better, right? So the next project we're gonna talk about, and there's been a lot of hype around this, is gonna be Wizards. So Wizards, what it is, it's a experimental NFT project by an anonymous team. It was a free mint, so you can consider it a DJ mint, but from the art and the mechanics and the creativity behind it, you know, it's beyond just a regular DJ mint. It's still a DJ mint, but they definitely put a lot more effort into it, right? Why everyone's talking about this on Twitter is because there's this mechanic where if you list your NFT below a certain price, and right now it's, you know, 3.2, what happens is that somehow, you know, on their website and stuff like that, other people can kill your NFT, right? I don't have one myself, so I don't know the exact mechanic, but from my understanding, uh, you have some kind of token or something, you use your tokens, and then if somebody lists, you can be like, bang, you know, your NFT is dead, and then you turn it into a skull. I think if you list, you're gonna get killed, and then you're going to get a skull, I believe. It's quite an interesting mechanic, right? Because it's not like they burn your NFT, they actually just replace the image and you got something else. And then there's gonna be like chapter two, and then there's gonna be this other mechanic, right? And so a lot of people are, you know, wanting to play the game because it's like a fun game where you get to kill other people in the NFT space because the assets are so valuable in a sense. It's kind of like a gambling game in a sense, you know, or it has the feeling of gambling of like, oh, like you put it lower and then we're having sex. And so is it better to have a skull? Is it better to have a wizard? Uh, you know, do you want to keep your wizard? Do you have to keep like increasing the floor price? So there's a lot of different mechanics. Um, some people are like, how come you didn't tell us that if I listed below this price then this is going to happen, right? So it's a lot of like confusion. Some people are angry. Some people love it because they get to like cause a lot of pain to other people. So it's like this whole, you know, drama thing that's going on in its own niche. So it's quite interesting to follow. It's just like, it's a kind of drama kind of thing. And I can understand why this team would be anonymous because it's like a lot of people are going to get angry when their NFTs die and they're not aware of like why it dies and things like that. But yeah, something interesting I'm following along. And uh, if you're interested, just check it out. But also I, I have to say like, even though they're listing it at 3.2, you can make an offer to buy these NFTs. So right now the real floor is going to be like 0.2. So I think as long as you don't list and you know, you accept bids and th things like that, then it doesn't really matter if you list or not, just like don't list it. But yeah, interesting concept, interesting game, definitely different from your average degen mint that is driving a lot of attention. And I mean, the volume right now is like 4K, right? It's quite a bit of money. And the royalty, the creator fees are going to be 5%. So it's not like extremely high, which is fine. But yeah, I mean, they're probably making a lot of money on the royalties. It's a fun game similar to like we're all gonna die or that poop project that we mentioned in the past for these kind of projects when they have a lot of hype in the beginning most of the time they kind of fade out into irrelevancy after like a month or two the only one that really survived was goblin town you know you just got to be careful if you're thinking about this long term or you're just trying to have fun or play a game or degen uh just understand your entry and exit and so with that said that is everything we got to cover for this video if you enjoyed it make sure to give it a like subscribe turn on notifications and let me know in the comments what kind of topics you want me to cover do you want me to go into deep dives you want me to talk about dj mans or you want the news on what the latest update is on the NFT space, let me know in the comments because what I see is what I'll create. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.